welcome to the course on introduction uh, to molecular thermodynamics. Now, the uh, very name molecular thermodynamics might confuse you because you already know that thermodynamics is a description of systems where you have bulk systems. That means, maybe a beaker full of water or a cylinder full of gas. And on the other hand, in the name itself, we have molecular. And molecular systems are comprised of molecules, one or two molecules or maybe a few tens. So, how is it so that both the terms are being combined under the same umbrella? That is what this course is all about. So, let us first look at as chemists the kind of systems that we work with. You may be working in the laboratory where you have a pair of test tubes and you are carrying out some kind of a reaction. So, that would be this kind of a situation. It may so happen that you are developing some kind of uh, fertilizer for practical use or maybe you are developing some medicines so that the sick can get better or maybe you have been asked to develop the material that can sustain the huge amount of heat released when a rocket is uh, being launched. Now, in all these cases in the design as well as in the understanding phase, a chemist generally look at the molecular pictures like this, either as a simple single molecule in the gas phase or a model of a few atoms giving you the basic unit that makes up the periodic structure of a solid or maybe there is a channel, artificial channel through which some molecules are being transported or maybe one looks for the structural determination of very complicated molecules like proteins and the basic question that we ask is when you are in the laboratory and thinking about your system in terms of these structures, in terms of these few tens of molecules, what you see here in the laboratory is very different. Let us say that a group of scientists worked very hard to determine the structure of this particular molecule and this is nothing but a nickel iron hydrogenase. It is an enzyme and when you follow the function of this enzyme, you are going to get plots like this which means that well, how do I connect this structure to the function whose signature is measured in the laboratory like this? So, that is the challenge, that is the kind of challenge that a chemist faces every day while handling the real life systems. So, the learning goal in this course is how does the structure of a molecular system affect its measurable thermodynamic properties? How does the structure of the system change as we go from the solid to the liquid and eventually to the gas phase? And finally, as chemists, we are interested in why some of the chemical reactions happen and they happen fast or they happen slow while some others do not. So, these are the questions that we will have, uh, we will try to answer at the end of this course. And let me take a few examples to make the learning goal clear. 
From your school days, you have learnt that an ideal gas is comprised of non-interacting molecules, which means that this is a molecular picture that you are talking about. When you go to the laboratory, you measure the property that is the ideal gas law, which is PV equal to nRT. Now, why should a system which at the molecular level is comprised of a very large number of non-interacting particles obey this kind of equation of state at the macroscopic real world? So, that is the question that we would like to answer. The second question that I pose it is about the most important liquid that we come across every day that is water. And water because of hydrogen bonding is known to exhibit a very large number of anomalous properties. Do you know why? The answer is yes, qualitatively I would say that I know the answer, but quantitatively given a system property, can you say if water is going to satisfy the final application goal that you have? And also as far as the biology of the system is concerned, you would like to know why is water the most important solvent in life? So, the action plan to address this very complex, very difficult set of questions is we need to understand the system that we are interested in. The kind of systems that we are talking about are very, very complex. They are comprised of typically 10 to the power of 23 particles which are interacting with each other. And therefore, a microscopic model of this system would require us to use the language of quantum mechanics and all of you are aware of the fact that you cannot solve quantum mechanical equations like the Schrodinger equation to know the complete information regarding the microscopic properties of the system. And therefore, sometimes it is found useful to uh, use the model of a microscopic state from classical mechanics. On the other end of the spectrum, we have the measurable macroscopic properties that we always measure in the laboratories. And this is here the description is fairly standardized and we use thermodynamics to describe the system properties at this level of uh, uh, understanding. So, the question is how do I connect the two limits? This connection is well known to be provided by this branch of physics which is known as statistical mechanics. So, in this course we will learn the intro, uh, introduction to the basic principles of statistical mechanics and the syllabus that we have in mind has two parts. The, in the first part we will talk about the language that is derived from statistical mechanics and used as the fundamental basis of molecular thermodynamics. So, we will start by reviewing some mathematical methods and classical thermodynamics and then we will introduce you to what we mean by micro and macroscopic states and we will talk about the collection of microscopic states which we will call as ensembles. And then we will talk about two types of ensembles, the microcanonical ensemble and the canonical ensemble. And both of these uh, ensembles will be applied to simple non-interacting systems to understand the language in uh, which we are adopting from statistical mechanics. The second part of the syllabus will be concerned uh, on the ap simple applications of molecular thermodynamics and here we are going to 
see very simple applications like how do we understand the thermal properties of solids or as I have already mentioned, how do we understand the properties that we measure in the laboratory like the equation of state of monatomic and diatomic ideal gases. And then I will introduce to you how to use classical mechanics and apply them to study thermodynamic properties of real gases and liquids. And finally, how do we understand chemical reactions that we deal with all the time? There are a very large number of standard textbooks in this uh, field. I would encourage you to have a look at some of the textbooks which are mentioned here. These are standard texts, but you are welcome to look through any book of your choice that you are comfortable with. Thank you and welcome to the course.